we're going to be talking all about healthcare data today. Okay. And um, specifically, you know, how we can make data talk between different hospital systems. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a pretty complex topic. Yeah. And, and you know, something you and I both, uh, uh, you know, have been thinking about and talking about a lot. Yeah. Um, but for those of you out there listening. Yeah. Um, I think you probably work in healthcare IT. Right. You know, it's a big deal. Yeah. When you've got patients, maybe they need to be transferred from one hospital to another. Mm -hmm. It could be an emergency. Right. You know, all their medical history, their test results, their diagnoses, medications, it's all got to get from point A to point B. Right. And it needs to happen fast. Right. Seamlessly. Yeah. Seamlessly and securely. Seamlessly and securely. Exactly. So how do we make that happen? What's the magic behind it? Well, I think the magic is that there's no magic. Right. Right. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And there's a lot of collaboration going on and a lot of technology. So, so we've got these acronyms floating around. You've probably seen them in your work. Oh, yeah. HL7, FHIR, DCOM. What are these? Well, they're all standards okay. that we use in healthcare to make sure that the data can talk to each other. Okay. Right. To make sure that the systems. Like a common language? Yeah, like a common language. So mm -hmm. HL7, health level seven, that's kind of the granddaddy of them all. Been around for a while. Okay. Yeah. You've got different versions of it, V2, V3. You know, they're still out there. But FHIR. FHIR. FHIR is the new kid on the block. It's fast healthcare interoperability resources. Okay. So FHIR is like the cool new language that everybody wants to learn. It is. It's it's built on modern web standards. Oh. So it's much easier to implement. Yeah. It's much more flexible. It uses these things called RESTful APIs. APIs. Mm hmm so and it's it's really designed for this data exchange in a way that the older versions of HL7 weren't. Okay, so it's really purpose built yeah. for what we're trying to do here. Exactly. Okay. Now you mentioned DICOM. What's that about? DICOM is all about images. So digital imaging and communications in medicine. That's what it stands for. So like X-rays and X-rays, CT scans, MRIs, all that kind of stuff. So if you need to share an image, okay. you got to use DICOM. DICOM, got it. Okay. okay, so we've got these standards. So now the systems can like technically talk to each other. Right. But how does the information actually move from, let's say, hospital A to hospital B? Well, so you've got these things called HIEs, health information exchanges. HIEs? Mm -hmm. So think of them as like regional hubs that connect different healthcare providers. Okay. So, you know, all the hospitals in a certain area mm -hmm. might be connected to this HIE and they can share data through it. So it's like a secure network. It's a secure network, exactly. Huh. And it facilitates the exchange of information. Okay. What about like real time though? So say a patient comes into the ER. Right. You don't have time to like send stuff through an HIE. You need information right now. That's when APIs come into play. Okay, APIs. So that's application programming interfaces. Mm -hmm. They allow systems to basically directly communicate with each other. Yeah, they're like a direct line. Right. So you can request specific information okay. from another system and get it back in real time. So are all APIs the same? No, there are different types of APIs. Okay. Um, but the ones that are becoming really common in healthcare are RESTful APIs. Okay. Um, and those work really well with FHIR, which is what we were talking about earlier. Got it. Um, and they're just, they're really good for this kind of web-based data exchange. Okay, so they're kind of like built for speed and efficiency. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we've got all these different systems, different standards. They're talking to each other. They're sending data back and forth. Right. But how do we make sure that they're actually understanding each other? Like, what if one hospital calls a certain lab test one thing and another hospital calls it something slightly different? That's where data mapping comes in. All right. So data mapping is all about making sure that the data itself is consistent okay. across different systems. So even if two hospitals are using FHIR, mm. they might code a specific condition differently. Right. Um, and so data mapping makes sure that everybody's speaking the same language at a data level. So are there any like examples you can think of where this data mapping becomes really, really tricky? Yeah, definitely. So think about allergies. Like, one hospital might have a very specific cert for a peanut allergy. Mm. Another hospital might just have a general cane for a food allergy. Right. And if you don't have proper data mapping... You could miss that. You could miss that crucial information. It's like a peanut allergy versus any kind of food allergy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So data mapping is really important for things like population health management, Okay. for research, for making sure that you're getting accurate data mm -hmm. when you're comparing information from different sources. Okay, that makes sense.
Now, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about security and privacy. Because we're dealing with very, very sensitive information here. Right. So how do we make sure that all this data that's flying back and forth is protected? So IAPA, that's the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, Dike. provides the legal framework right. for protecting patient privacy. Okay. But we also have a lot of technology that helps to enforce those rules. Okay. Um, so things like encryption. Encryption. That's really important. It's like putting your data in an armored truck, right? Yeah. So even if somebody intercepts the data, mm -hmm. they can't read it without the key. Right. It's scrambled. It's scrambled. And we also have these things called audit trails. Audit trails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they track every access okay. modification of patient data. So who looked at what, when? Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like a security camera for your data. Right. Okay, so before any of this sharing even happens, mm -hmm. are there agreements that hospitals need to have in place with each other? Absolutely, yeah. So we have these things called business associate agreements, or BAAs. 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 Mm -hmm. And they're basically contracts that yeah. outline the responsibilities of each party in handling sensitive data. So everybody knows what they can and can't do. Okay. And everybody's accountable. So it's like, it's like a prenup for data sharing. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we've talked about a lot of technology, a lot of standards, a lot of agreements. Right. But why are we doing all this? What's the point? The point is to improve patient care. Okay. Right. It's to make sure that patients are getting the best possible care. Right. And that we can make informed decisions about their treatment. So give me an example. How does this actually play out in the real world? So imagine a patient comes into the ER unconscious. Mm -hmm. We have no idea who they are, what their medical history is. Scary. Yeah. Scary. But if we have access to their medical records, yeah, yeah. we can see their allergies, their medications, any previous conditions they might have. Right. That could be life-saving. Right. Life-saving, yeah. And it's not just about emergency situations. Right. It's also about transitions of care. So if a patient's being discharged from the hospital mm -hmm. and they're going to a skilled nursing facility, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that that facility has all the information they need. To take care of the patient, yeah. To take care of the patient, yeah. Okay. Now, so we've got these systems in place. How do we make sure they're actually working? Well... Testing, testing, testing. Testing. That's really important. Before you go live with any kind of data exchange system, mm -hmm. you need to test it rigorously. Well, you need to simulate different scenarios. Right. Make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to. Okay. You know, think of it like a dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal, right? Before the big show. Okay, what about training? Training is also crucial. I mean, you can have the most sophisticated data exchange system in the world. Mm-hmm. But if the clinicians don't know how to use it, right, it's not going to do any good. It's Same. useless, yeah. Okay, so training is super important. And then, just like any other technology, I'm guessing there's ongoing maintenance, updates, security yeah. patches. Absolutely. All well, that stuff. It's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process, right? Yeah. So it's not just a one and done. No, it's a continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. Okay. Well, wow, we really covered a lot of ground today. We did. It is a fascinating world, this world of healthcare data exchange. Yes. Um, and I think it's only going to become more complex as we move forward. Yeah. More data, more systems. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the important thing to remember is that it's all about the patient. Right. Right. It's all about making sure that they're getting the best possible care. And that the data is being used ethically and responsibly. That's a really good point. Mm. As we have access to more and more data. Yeah. We need to be very mindful mm -hmm. of how we're using it. Yeah. You know, to make sure that it's being used for good. Right. And not for, you know, yeah. any nefarious purposes. Exactly. All right. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap up this deep dive. Okay. I really appreciate your insights today. It was my pleasure. And um, you know, this is a topic that I think we're all gonna be continuing to talk about. Yeah. And think about for a long time to come. Absolutely. So for those of you listening out there, thanks for joining us on the deep dive. And keep exploring this fascinating world of healthcare data. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was great having you. All right. See you next time.